Hello, you whippersnappers! What are we talking about today? I'll let to be excuses speak for that. Just finish the last video. Enjoy your vacation. Why, thank you, I did very much. Observe my, my slightly more tan face. And since you're asking for suggestions, how about closures? To be us, closures it is. In case you're a new viewer dropping by, this is a series where we learn functional programming using JavaScript. You can watch the other episodes in this series by clicking there. So, what are closures? In JavaScript, functions are not just functions. They are also closures. What that means is that the function body has access to variables that are defined outside the function body. Let me show you. Have a look at this code. We are assigning a uh, variable here uh, called me uh, and we're assigning it the value Bruce Wayne and we're then declaring a function called greet me which console logs hello me exclamation mark and then we call the greet me function here. Let's run that. Hello, Bruce Wayne. Notice that we are not passing in an argument here. We're just calling it without any arguments. We are directly referring to the me that is assigned outside of the function scope. The reason that we can do this is that JavaScript functions like readme are closures. We cannot do this in languages that does not have support for closures. In a language without support for closures, we would have to pass the name as an argument to the function instead, because such a language does not have access to the, uh, the outer scope of itself like that. Let me go back to the original. I really like to stress here that readme does really have access to the outer variable scope. It does not snapshot the value of me uh, at the time it is declared. For instance, if I reassign me to be Batman here and run it, it will say hello Batman. So greet me does not copy the value of me. It actually reads whatever the variable is at that time from the outer scope. And it will do this even if greet me was an asynchronous function being called from a, say an Ajax callback or something like that. GreetMe will remember this outer context that it's declaring. Even if GreetMe is called from a uh, completely different part of the application or a different module, it will still refer to this specific context. You all being healthy skeptics, you're probably now asking yourself why is this useful? What is the point of closures? Closures actually have quite a bit of use cases, but I'm going to give you one that I think illustrates why closures are useful. Let's look at this function together. It's called send request. And we start by assigning a request ID to a variable. We then use uh, just a uh, the standard jQuery Ajax function. We call an URL and when that is successful we alert the string request request ID returned. I'm not gonna run this I'm gonna let your imaginations execute it but what will happen is that since all functions in JavaScript are closures including the callback to success it will have access to the request ID that we declared, even though this callback is executed way later. This really illustrates a good use of closures. It's when you start a task and you want to specify something that happens when that task is done with stuff that is available to you when you start the task. Closures makes that easy and readable. In a language that does not support closures, you would probably have to have some kind of 
data object that you pass into the Ajax function, which it in turn passed into success. And if it didn't have that, you would probably have to create some kind of request object with properties and stuff instead of just simply doing a function. This kind of thing becomes sort of icky if you don't have closures. We have talked a bit about what closures are. I have showed you a practical example of why they are a good thing. But closures is one of those things in JavaScript that just permeates the entire language. There are more use cases than the one I showed you, more than will fit into this video or even a second one. Closures is just one of those things that you have to use a lot on your own in your code for you to really internalize it. However, Mozilla, having just great JavaScript documentation overall, has a super, super good page on closures on their site. And I have linked it down in the show notes. You should go there and check those examples out and start using closures in your code to get a feel for it. And that is it for today. As usual, I'd love to hear from you, either down below or at mpjme on Twitter. Tell me what you thought about this episode or ask me a random question. Or maybe tell me what you think that the next episode, Monday, should be about. And speaking of that episode, make sure you don't miss it. Subscribe by clicking my face in the corner. Until next Monday, stay curious and subscribe.